Joining me now is Miles Banks, who just had a big win in the fifth round via TKO at Fury Amateur Series 39, winning the heavyweight title over Brent Campbell. Miles, how are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing great, man. Blessed to be here. Happy to have you on. And I, I was looking at, uh, you know, your topology record and you're used to getting guys out of there real quick. So this must have been a little bit different from you. Did you expect this fight to go as long as it did? I can honestly say I didn't expect it to go to the fifth round. I expected like a second or third round kind of deal, but um, I'm not mad at it. I'm, I'm, I'm extremely happy I got to get that experience, that ring time, because I mean, I probably learned more from this fight than I did from my other two fights put together. So, How did you and your coaches feel like your, your cardio was holding up, you know, getting into the fifth round? Did you feel good? Yeah, like I got a little tired in the third round, um, but then I got my second one by the fourth round. I kind of figured out better pacing for that, um, uh, you know, for, for where I was in that fight. And it's, unfam it's all unfamiliar to me. So, you know, I, I'm, it's my first time kind of going through it, but I'm just adapting as I go. I understand that's just, that's just, that's just, that's just the game. That's the way it has to go. Um, I felt great, man. And then the fifth round, I kind of like checked in a little bit more, like, all right, this is it. This is it. <laughs> let's, let's do this. Let's knock it out. So I felt good, man. I can't say I felt horrible. I've definitely felt worse. It definitely is um different than anything I've felt before. Like it's, it's hard to simulate that without having had been through that. But now that I know what that feels like, I'll be able to train uh, more efficiently for, for those situations in the future. Did you and your team, did you guys uh, have a lot of info on Brent leading into this fight? Did you have a specific game plan for this one? Um, yeah, pretty much. I mean, he, you know, his fights are pretty much all on YouTube. So I just, we, I, as soon as I got a name, I just typed it in, started watching his videos. I watched it a bunch. Of, I mean, probably that first day I've, I watched all of his fights at least three, four times. Um, huge student of the game. So I'm, a, I'm big on film. I, I believe it's important. Preparation is important. It gives me a lot of confidence. And, like, confidence is huge in this, in this sport. I don't care what anybody says. You've got to have confidence. Um, we prepared for him, man. I, I pretty, we pretty much knew what, what, what he would do. I, I thought he would throw a few more teeps. He didn't throw as many teeps as I thought he would throw. Knew he would go for the single leg. So prepared for that, but, you know, worked on a takedown defense and just in case I did get into un any unfavorable positions. Um, I worked a lot of, um, you know, just working out of crappy positions, man. If he got me a top mount, side control, whatever the case may be, I was just ready for whatever the fight might have taken us. I, I always find it fascinating when I talk to fighters after a fight and, you know, the, the in-fight adjustments that take place. What, what did your corner tell you, you know, as the fight was progressing about things they wanted you to tweak in there? Um, I had to just uh, I have to just trust myself a little bit more. Like I am a skilled fighter. I'm a technical fighter. I do like those kind of fights. So, um, you know, we did kind of figure he would either come out really hot and try to get me out of there early or he would come out and fight a more technical fight in which I knew I would pick him apart in a technical fight, which I mean, I, I, when I watch it, it seems like that's that's what happened. Um, as far as during the match went, the one adjustment, the most major adjustment was just figuring out that his, his that attack zone and which is pretty much, uh, you know, he would come around down to his right to try to go for that takedown. And once I kind of figured that out, I was able to crowd that up with some, with some strikes. It made him a little bit more wary of going for that takedown, and it just stagnated him a little bit more. Then he became reactive to what I was doing. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, have, I have great coaches, man, great coaches. Um, Jeremy wasn't able to be there, but I had uh, the honor of having Trevin corner me, Trevin Giles, and and he's a, he's a wonderful trainer partner. I learned so much from him. I learned so much from my coaches. So it was great. It was, it was great. It was good. And this, this event, Fury Amateur Series 39, it was in Houston, Texas. What was the venue like? What was the, the atmosphere, the fans, uh, what, you know, just on that evening? You know, how, how hyped was it? Man, the venue was pretty familiar to me now. I fought there three times this year. <laughs> so it's really familiar. I walk in there, it smells like home. It feels like home, honestly, at this point. Um, I had a lot of family and friends come out from, you know, from, from New York. Some old teammates come out from uh, when I played in San Antonio. Um, Lots of friends, my girl, my sisters came. So I just had it was it was great, man. And a lot of people, you know, I'm like building um my own little like kind of fan base. I don't want to say like a fan base. It sounds it sounds rude, but <laughs> but uh, but you know, I've been my own little fan base. People I people I don't know, people I've never seen before. You know, they they show me a lot of support. They contact me on Instagram, um, you know, letting me know that they're watching me, they're following my journey, and I, that gives me that gives me so much fuel and so much fire, man. Like I was just focused, ready to deliver. What did it mean to you to, to win this title, to, to get that honor? I mean, it's got to be pretty special, especially three fights in your amateur career. It came really fast, I can say. It came really fast, but um, uh, 
winning this title specifically was on my list of goals. Like at the beginning of the year, on January 1st, we had a big team practice. They gave us all this list of paper, like write down your goals. We're going to hold you accountable to these goals. And I met every one of my, um, uh, you know, my, my, my fighting goals and my personal goals this year. Like I've been able to knock them all out in seven months, <laughs> literally. So, <laughs> so, uh, so it's been, uh, it's been good. It's been good, man. Like I, I, it is an honor to have it. It is an honor to like be recognized as, you know, king of the hill right now for the amateurs. Um, you know, hopefully they can give me a, give me a title defense in here sometime soon. Uh, well, you know, not super soon, but like, you know, soon before the end of the year, I want to get a title defense in. And then from there, you know, we just take our steps from there. Well, t- tell me how you found MMA, because I know you got a, a pretty high level background in basketball. H- how did you, that transition go for you? Um, I was always interested in uh, martial arts and fighting and everything like that. I took like a couple Muay Thai classes at the gym that I eventually went back home to train at. And I learned so much there. Uh, it's Militia Fight Academy, my family. Um, but then, um, uh, you know, I had I had got into a, like a little falling out with my coach and I was still able to stay at school and be on scholarship and everything, but I couldn't play my final year of basketball. And it was just really like depressing for me. It was really depressing for me. You know, I wanted to play basketball. I didn't have anything to do. I'm a super competitive guy and I like to, I like to achieve things. I need to be achieving things. I need to be doing something so I can feel like I'm not just kind of being a bum, so to speak. Um, and my brother, man, God rest his soul, he was like, well, you need something to do. I, had, I, I was probably like 295 at the time. He's like, you need something to do. You want to fight, right? So let's go down and uh, take, he took me down to try a trial class at this gym now, like two exits away. I did a trial class um, at jujitsu in the gi. My back was so sore. I couldn't even move the next day. I was like, man, that was cool. I got to think about it. My brother's like, man, you got the money in your pocket, right? Pay them in. Let's go. It's what you want to do. So I paid them. And then I just committed to it from there. I came back like 30 days straight just because I was getting ragged on a big dude. I was getting ragged. They're like controlling me. I don't know what's going on. I'm like, I got to, I got to get, I got to get good at this. So, and then it was just, you know, the, the consistency of it all. Um, and my, it, it contributes so much to my growth as a person too. So I just love it, man. It's, just, it's a, it's an individual sport. I'm not huge on team sports. I do love the team spirit and the team environment that martial arts creates, you know, we're all helping each other out, but when you go out there, it's just me as opposed to basketball. We go out there for better or worse. If something bad happens, everybody's just pointing the finger. Right. And when it's me, I'm accountable for my own actions. I'm accountable for my wins and my losses. Um, and I, I, I like that. I can make my bed and I can lay in it. I can be accountable for what I'm doing because you know, that don't get me far. I'm fine with that. Did you have aspirations to, to, you know, make it to the NBA? Was that like a goal for you? It's a kind of like a no and a yes, right? I'll say no. I never thought that I was really good enough to go to the NBA. For the at this, and then the same token, right? I was still kind of young minded and immature that I just kind of thought it would work out for me, right? I just thought that it would work out for me, that things would just work out. Maybe I would end up go playing overseas somewhere, which I did have an opportunity to do so. But I don't want to go live in somebody else's country that I don't know. And then playing overseas basketball is a lot more compli- um, It's a lot more complicated because nothing's guaranteed. I, I know a lot of people that play overseas. Sometimes they don't get paid. Sometimes they don't get paid on time. You don't speak the language. It's a big, it's a big adjustment thing. And I'm like, well, I could just stay here and make – this money do I don't even love basketball like that right now so I, I don't I don't I don't want to go to Germany I don't want to go to Austria gotcha. I don't want to go anywhere and play basketball I want to stay home so that's what ended up happening and then I was able to sink more time into this man just growing this growing it growing in this I I want to ask you one more quick thing about about hoops before we transition back to, to MMA but do you do you follow the NBA now like I'm a junkie I don't know if you can tell behind me but uh, I'm a big Celtics fan. I'm, I'm from New England, so I'm I'm heartbroken that we lost to the Warriors. Were Were you watching that? Like, do you still keep up and, and watch the NBA? I keep it 100 with you. I pretty much started phasing out of basketball when Kobe Bryant passed. The, when Kobe Bryant retired, I was a huge Kobe fan. Man, I'm a young dude. I'm 27, so to me, I don't even understand basketball without Kobe in it. You know, like it it was just so different to me. So I stepped, I shied away from it for a couple of years. And then now I kind of just catch it here and there. Like, a lot of, all my brothers love watching that stuff. So if I'm around, we're going to watch the game together. We might go to the bar, watch the game, or I might it might be on here. But just me myself, 
I'm not gonna watch that stuff. I watch some cartoons. So I watch anime. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, fair enough. Well, how did your, your your basketball ability help you transition for MMA? Because obviously, there's a lot of you know like motor skills and, and just things in general of being a basketball player where you're a high level athlete. That must have made it easier for you to to get on the mats and uh, you know excel as a mixed martial artist. Yeah, um, from an aspect of just understanding hard work, discipline. And, uh, you know, what it takes to be a high level athlete, as well as um, being used to being under bright lights. I've played in major stadiums, you know, in front of thousands and thousands of people. Like, you know, I've gotten those butterflies. I felt I, I understand that feeling. I understand that no matter how I'm feeling when I step on to the, you know, when I step into the cage, the ring, the court, whatever the case may be. All of those nerves leave my body. There's no room for it anymore. I'm just totally focused on what I'm, what I'm preparing to do. Um, that is like one of the biggest advantages. Also, just my agility, speed, and uh, footwork. You know, it can't. They 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 help. They help. It helps to be skilled, and it helps to be athletic as well too. I'll use everything I got right now. <laughs> and how tall are you? Are you six nine? Eh, something like that. <laughs> something like that. I kind of you know they ask me. I just. I tell them whatever. I don't want to. I, I never like really like fully disclose it. It's hard enough for me to define to find um, uh, matches enough as it is. But yeah, about six eight, six nine. And and what is your reach like? Yeah, you pretty much have like a John Jones type reach where you're just going to be bigger than everyone else at heavyweight. I have no. I have no idea. I don't. I I, I never. I never take my wingspan or anything like that on my reach. But I don't have super long arms either. Like my arms are pretty much about as long as most people that I know. The other other heavyweights and maybe even some like some people that are set that are shorter than me. My hands are pretty small too. Like I don't <laughs> I don't know what it is, but I get a lot more um, length out of using my legs. So you know, like to kind of shoot in and out or to you know throw some kicks. It extends my range. I got long legs, longer legs than arms. So, is it hard for you to make heavyweight the two sixty five limit? Do you, do you walk around bigger than that? No, 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 no. I walked in here at two fifty. I came in. I, I weighed in at two fifty this fight. I fought at 250, so it was, um, I mean, it's, it's really regular. I walk around at about 265, 270, so when I'm in really good shape, I come down to about 255, 260, and that's, uh, you know, that's, that's fine. I'll, I'll walk around at that, so that, making weight is not an issue for me. <laughs> I can pretty much power if I want, just train a bunch more. Well, you mentioned Trevin Giles earlier in the interview, and that's a name that anyone that follows the MMA game, they know who that is. T tell me who you have around you day to day. Like, who are your main training partners that are pushing you in camp? Man, um, I got James Ford. He's another Fury. He's another Fury amateur um, uh, heavyweight at the time, but I think he's making a move soon. Um, uh, Trevin, Trevin Giles helps me out a lot tremendously, especially in my boxing, man. Like, I think he's really good. He's really knowledgeable. I love just to like listen to him talk. I don't got to say anything. I can listen to him talk and he'll just, I'll learn something. I mean, even just sparring against him for three rounds, like, you know, we're not the same weight class, but I still have to grow so tremendously in five minutes against him. Like if we spar for five minutes, I have to, I have to do something new because his IQ is so much higher than mine. I can't just do the same thing. I got to mix, I got to mix things up against him. Um, Rakeem Cleveland, my big brother, he's like, he's like, he's like, he's like my mentor right now. He teaches me a lot, has a lot of experience. He fights for a Bellator um he, he, he gives me a lot of game gives me a lot of time a lot of wisdom I really appreciate him I appreciate um them and then man you know everybody else that fights out of war we all fight for fury pretty much and uh a team full of killers man they're always helping me out always help me push my cardio always help me you know sharpen things up even if I'm even if I am bigger even if I am maybe you know getting the better of them in the rounds there's always something I can improve on um, to make myself better and I'm always listening because they have so much experience between all the guys that are there they're, five fight win streaks some of these guys you know six fight win streaks some of these guys they fight several times in a year they fight back to back and they're fighting a whole fight so like they got so much experience that i could just give me some of that give me some of that <laughs> you know so i appreciate these guys man yeah no no doubt about it and do you have any idea as to maybe who you might be making your your first title defense against has, has fury told you you know who who might be around the corner for you no idea yet um I, I just wanted to be somebody good. You know, I don't want to backtrack. I don't want to go back to, I don't want to fight like a scrub. You know, it has to, it has to be, it has to be worth the time. It has to be worth it because I'm not going to be doing too many more amateur bouts. Um, so, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll come with some names eventually. We'll watch some film. 
Um, I'm not running from anybody by me, by any means, you know, I just wanted to be a good fight. I don't want to go, I don't want to train, get into a camp for somebody. I know for sure I'm going to knock out in the first round. Like, it's just some people you just kind of know, like, uh, you know, it's a fight, but sometimes it's, sometimes you just kind of know that's as weird as that may sound. Right. Um, I just want a good, I just, I just want a good fight. That's all. I want a good fight. I want another fight. Probably not as, you know, drug out as this one, but I do want a good fight. I want something that's going to test me that I'm going to be able to grow against and take some confidence from moving on and moving on in my career. How many more amateur fights do you think you'll have before you do turn pro? No telling, man. It just depends, right? Like I'm taking it one at a time. I would, like I said, I would like to get at least one or two more. If I can get one more, then from there we'll see. You know, at the end of the year we'll sit down and um, see where I'm at, see what the see what see what the opportunities are, see if there's any more game opponents at, at the amateur level that I can fight because the more ring time that I can get before I go pro up into getting pro, I think it's going to be better for me because, you know, this, 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 um, this track that I'm on seems so fast and so expedited. So I just want to make sure I'm getting a proper amount of, uh, of time and experience on the, in the cage and in the ring and in the, on the mats to, um, uh, you know, make up for those years that I'm not going to have to grow in this sport before, but possibly before I get to a larger stage. You know, I'm sure you watch Contender Series, and, I mean, you're seeing Dana White bring guys in now. I mean, look at Bo Nickel, who's going to be fighting at Contender Series later. I think it's in August now. And he only has, what, two fights as a, as a professional right now. So, I mean, you might not have to, ha you know, have five, six, seven fights before you get that opportunity. Is that something that, that you have talked about with, with your team? Do you feel like that is going to happen for you earlier in your pro career? Absolutely, man. Um, that's, that's, that's exactly, that's exactly it. Basically like, um, you know, I can, I can, I can say this cause it doesn't fight it. We're fighting to win. So, right. Assuming I handle my business, do what I got to do when all these fights that are thrown my way. Um, I may, I may only get four, five fights as a pro before I get that call. If I'm doing what I'm doing at the professional level and, you know, winning these fights in spectacular fashion and, you know, making it really convincing and staying exciting, then I think that I think it's really possible that I'll get that call in four to five fights, maybe six. I mean, the more, the more I can get, I'm not mad at it, you know, but um, I am expecting to get that call a little bit sooner on, which is why like I'm staying at this amateur level, taking these fights before I go to the pro level, because I mean, I plan on, I'm, I'm headed for the top. I'm, I'm, I plan on being on top. I'm not, I'm not coming to be a participant to be, uh, to just, to just be in the UFC. I want, championships. I want belts. I want my name mentioned with the greatest. So, you know, this is the base level for me. This is the ground level for me, but I'm, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and say it because that's what I'm shooting for. And I need to be held accountable to those, to those goals. Cause that's, that's the goals that I really have. That's why I do it. I don't do anything to be less than the greatest. So. Who would be your dream matchup in the UFC? When you look at the heavyweight division, who's, who's the guy that, you know, when, when you go to sleep at night, you, you envision yourself knocking out and, and winning the belt. John Jones. John Jones, okay. damn, that's the GOAT, man. That's my favorite fighter. Um, I don't know if you could even see, like, sometimes, like, so much of my game is, like, um, I take so much parts, of, I take so many parts of his game, but he's the main reason why I want to be, I need to be such a, such a complete fighter. I can't just be a striker. I can't just be a, I got to be everything. I have to be, I have to have a high IQ. I have to be able to strike and clinch and wrestle and kickbox and everything. I got to, you know, I just, he's the, he's my, He's my pinnacle. Like, that's the dude I put on the pedestal right there. There's other good heavyweights, absolutely. Like, there's a lot of heavyweights that I definitely respect. I think Curtis Blade is really good. Um, I look forward to one day fighting him because he's a, he's a really talented dude, I think. Um, obviously, Francis. Obviously, Francis. I'm going to have to go through him one day. Um, Cyril Gan. I think Cyril Gan would be a really good fight, too, as well. So, hopefully, these guys stay in there. They stay healthy. They stay available. And, you know, I'll work my way up to them. And then I'm going to take them out like I have to because you got to be the best to be the best. So I'm, 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 I'm open to it. Well, I'm looking forward to it, my man. I'm, I'm excited to see uh, what is next for you in your career. And the trajectory looks very high. So you certainly have all the pieces to the puzzle to, to, to get to that next level. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about that for you. Uh, and it is great talking to you for the first time. Before I do let you go, I want to give you the floor. Please tell people where they can follow you on social media. If you have any, anyone to thank, any sponsors to plug, the floor is yours. Oh, yeah, for sure. So I'll start by thanking my sponsors. Um, man, we had, um, uh, we got variable body works, always taking care of me, helping me out with my recovery, made me feel fantastic. I had no injuries, no aches, no pains, nothing going into that camp. Um, Sammy as well, too, helped me out with my recovery, allowed me to come over after I get off work at nine o'clock. 
he doesn't come over to his house at 11 o'clock and use his ice bath and, you know, sit in his house and watch TV and use the Norma Tech boots. So thank you so much, Sammy. I appreciate you, brother. I love you. Um, we had HKA always sending me gear. Um, fighter, prep, fighter food prep sent me, some, sent me a bunch of stuff too. Um, Unity uh, Services hooked me up. They made a lot of things possible for me this camp because, you know, being a fighter is not the most luxurious, especially in these amateur, in these amateur times, man. It's not, it's not the most lucrative. So I appreciate all my sponsors, um, like, greatly, greatly, greatly. If you want to follow me on anything, you can follow me on um, Instagram. It's going to be Banks Marley, B-A-N-K-S-M-A-R-L-E-Y. Um, I think on Twitter is about the same, but I don't even use Twitter. I feel like it just gets me in trouble. So, <laughs> yeah, just follow me on Instagram. That's where you can follow me. Follow my hijinks. I'm a pretty uh, classless dude. <laughs>